Galatians. Uh, let me look, let me look. Uh, uh, we're going to go to Galatians. Who's reading for me today? I don't have a reader today. Officer Liam. All right, Officer Liam, one second, one second. I'm looking at something. You know what's funny is that when you're about to go over class, your mind is shooting here and shooting there. You got a thousand things in your mind. And uh, mm. okay, go to uh, Acts before we go there. Acts 18 and verse 23. I want to start there. Yes, sir. The book of Acts, chapter 18, verse 23. And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia in order, strengthening all the disciples. So... The book of Galatians is written to those Israelite disciples. The word disciples means students. The word disciples means students. So he went throughout all Galatia. So now when we get to the book of Galatians, and we're going to go to the fifth chapter, I believe chapters one through four. There are many uh, YouTube lessons on the book of Galatians that we have up, correct? Am I right? Yes, sir. Are they still up? Are they still up? Yes. Yeah, I know YouTube is systematically shutting down our videos. So if you brothers and sisters have not either downloaded or gotten the copies from OR, shame on you. Shame on you. So obviously, Liam, Galatians yes, chapter 5 and verse 1. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Read it again. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. Wherewith Christ has made us free. Write this down. The liberty wherein Christ has made us free is referring to the New Testament, the new covenant, wherein Christ died for the sins of the nation of Israel. Read it again. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Write this down. The yoke of bondage is the old covenant of animal sacrifice. The yoke of bondage is the old covenant of animal sacrifice. Let's prove that. Give me act, I mean Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. Let's start at verse 8, Officer Leon. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 8. Because we're going here because, number one, he talked, Galatians 5 and 1, he talked about liberty. Mm -hmm. Then he talked about a yoke of bondage. Yes, All right, come up. Yes, sir. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not. So we broke the old covenant. We messed that thing up 100%. Go ahead. Save the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, save so the Lord. So this new covenant is not for all nations. It's only for Israel. Go ahead. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. So from there, give me the book. Jump down to verse 13. I'm sorry. Verse 13. In that he saith, a new covenant he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. So now, so that's one precept. I'm going to give you another precept. Go, let's go to Acts 13. Acts chapter 13, and I want verse 38 and 39. Acts chapter 13 and verse 38. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. So this man is referring to Christ. Go ahead. And by him all that believe are justified from all things. So under the New, custom, new Testament, New Covenant, we are justified from all things. From which ye could not 
be justified by the law of Moses. Because the old covenant was a yoke of bondage. It could not justify us. If you were an idolater, death for you. If you committed fornication, death for you. There were many sins that the old covenant law of animal sacrifice could not justify you from. Okay, Acts 15, verse 10 now. Yoke of bondage. The book of Acts, chapter 15, and verse 10. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? You see that? Jump back, jump up to verse 5. Verse 5. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. The law of Moses make a reference to animal sacrifice. Now jump down to verse 10 again. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the, the neck of the disciples? You see what they're calling the law of Moses? A yoke. They're calling it a yoke. Go ahead. To put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. We broke that old covenant. We could not bear it. Okay. Everybody with me so far? Let's go back to Galatians 5. So this is why it's, it's paramount that we familiarize ourselves with the book of Acts. Galatians 5 and 1 again. Yes, sir. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. They, there was a big doctrine. That's what we just read in Acts 15 verse uh, 5. They said, except you be circumcised, you can't be saved. That was the doctrine back then. And that circumcision not only included circumcision of your penis, it meant circumcision in the law. You had to do every iota. Okay, watch this. Read it again, verse 2. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Why? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 7, 19. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 19. Circumcision is nothing. Circumcision is nothing. And uncircumcision is nothing. And uncircumcision is nothing. But the keeping of the commandments of God. But the keeping of the commandments of God. Why is that important? Because you had the circumcised Israelites breaking the commandments, referring to the... I'm going to prove that. Give me Matthew 23, and I think it's verse 1 and 2, where it says, don't do as they do, something like that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Matthew 23. I'm, we're coming back to Corinthians. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 2, saying, The scribe and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Mm -hmm. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. They were hypocrites. So go back to 1 Corinthians seven nineteen. This is why this statement was made. Circumcision is nothing. Circumcision is not. The scribes and Pharisees, they were circumcised. Paul says circumcision is nothing. Go ahead. And uncircumcision is nothing. And the uncircumcision is nothing. Go ahead. But the keeping of the commandments of God. That's what the Lord is looking for. Keeping the commandments. Now, listen good to what I'm about to say to you brothers right now. You have Christians that use that verse to say, see, you don't have to be circumcised. That's not what Paul is saying. He's saying that those that are circumcised are breaking God's law. And those that are uncircumcised are breaking God's law. God wants us to keep the commandments. Nowhere in there did he say the law of circumcision is done away with. He did not say that. Everybody with me so far? Okay. I, I, let me just prove that since I know some of y'all might still got Christianity on the brain. Give me Romans 4. Some of y'all got Caesar Bow on the brain. TD on the brain. Creflo on the brain. Romans 4 and verse, uh, let's start at verse 9. The book of Romans, chapter 4 and verse 9. Now, let me fill in the gaps. Remember, there was a split in the nation of Israel. Everybody with me so far? You had northern kingdom, southern kingdom. Northern kingdom, they was the devil the Bible speaks of. They went into idolatry, okay? Judah, the kingdom of Judah was supposedly keeping the law. Everybody with me so far? I'm going to get in all the kingdom. One day coming up, y'all going to get it. Yeah, you following Judah? Okay, so you're okay. 
Start at verse 9. So now, watch this. Judah was saying, northern kingdom Israelites are not accepted because they are not circumcised. That was the argument. Verse 9. Romans chapter 4, verse 9. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also? So does the blessings only come on Judah, the kingdom of Judah only, and not on the northern kingdom? Go ahead. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Mm -hmm. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Meaning what? Paul was a master of the law. When did God deal with Abraham? When he got circumcised or before he got circumcised? Before he got yeah. circumcised. So Paul cut the argument. He said God dealt with Abraham when he was uncircumcised. Watch the next verse. And he received the sign of circumcision. Now, this is going to answer, should you be circumcised today? Verse 11 again. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised, mm -hmm. that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Y'all see that? That's some heavy stuff right there. So that doesn't mean... Because God dealt with Abraham when he was uncircumcised, that the Lord said, well, you know what? To hell with circumcision. No, Abraham went and got circumcised as a seal of righteousness. So now likewise, you got many brothers come into this truth. God's dealing with you on certain levels. Okay, should you get circumcised? Yes. But it's not the first thing you need to do. The first thing you need to do is have what? Faith. That is the first thing you have to have. Faith in Christ. Then, in time, get circumcised. That was the argument of Acts 15. Same argument. Let's go back to Galatians. No, 1 Corinthians 7, 19 again. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Circumcision is nothing, mm -hmm. and uncircumcision is nothing, but the keeping of the commandments of God. That's the point. So I hope everybody understands that, right? Y'all with me? All right, Galatians 5, and what verse are we at? We at verse... Three. Three. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Wait, Who's read verse three again. I'm sorry. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. That he is a debtor to do the whole law. So now you've got to remember what happened in Acts. Acts 15 verse 5. They said, except you be circumcised and keep the law of Moses, you cannot be saved. What were they talking about? The same thing we're reading here. Verse 3 again. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Watch this. He's going back to Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 26. Let's read that. Deuteronomy chapter 27 and verse 26. Paul is explaining what it means to be a debtor to do the whole law. So we're going back to the old covenant, what was stated, what was stipulated. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 27 and verse 26. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. And all the people shall say, Amen. So when it said you're cursed, if, you're not, if you don't do all the law, that includes animal sacrifice. And all of Israel said amen to that statement. Now go to James 2 and 10. Watch this. James 2 and 10 is another scripture that Christians use to not keep the commandments. James chapter 2 and verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law. That's the key. The whole law is referring to the old covenant. That's what it's talking about. Go ahead. And yet offend in one point. If you offend in one point. He is guilty of all. You're guilty of all. So James was explaining the same thing Paul addressed that we just read. That Moses addressed in Deuteronomy 27 and 6. The old covenant was that if you broke one, you broke them all. That was the old covenant. Everybody with me so far? Read it again. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Mm -hmm. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill... Thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do. And they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. See that? The law of liberty. That's the new covenant. 
The law of liberty is the new covenant. Everybody with me so far? I don't want to lose nobody. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. We're in verse 4 now. Uh, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 4. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. If you are justified by the law, what law? The law of animal sacrifice, the old covenant laws. Everybody with me so far? That's, you have to be able to make a distinction. It says you are fallen from grace. Grace is it's another word for liberty. Grace is another word for the new covenant in Christ. Watch this. Give me John 1.17. And if you don't know, now you know. John 1, 17. John chapter 1, verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. See that? The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So it's making a distinction. You got to know what's he talking about? Talking about the law of animal sacrifice. The grace referring to the sacrifice of Christ. Old covenant, new covenant. Everybody with me so far? If I'm going too fast, just let me know. Just let me know. You got to be able to make the distinction when you're reading. What are they talking about? Let's go back. Uh, actually, give me Hebrews 10, 4 through 10. Hebrews 10. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. So now, chapter 10, the Apostle Paul is explaining what part of the law was done away with. Was it the dietary law done away with? Was the civil laws done away with? Were the moral laws done away with? Were the ceremonial laws done away with? Or were the sacrificial laws done away with? There's five categories. So now here in chapter 10, he's going to make it crystal clear what part of the law was done away with. Read. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Meaning what? The prophecies of Christ's coming was prophesied from Genesis all the way to the end. Go ahead. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not. Neither has pleasure in therein which are offered by the law. See that? Verse 8 is the key. Which are offered by the law. The law. Offered by the law. So when you read about we are not under the law, it's referring to what we're reading right here. Everybody with me so far? So when we read about you, if you broke one, you broke, broke one law, you are broken them all. We're reading exactly what we're reading. We're reading exactly what we're reading. <laughs> We're reading, Paul is explaining what we're reading about right here. Go ahead. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first. He taketh away the first, meaning the first covenant of animal sacrifice. That he may establish the second. That he may establish the second covenant, the new covenant. Go ahead. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. There you go. Let's go back to Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. Read verse 4 again. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law. So they were saying what? I, I, I do my animal sacrifice. I pay my tithing. I do this with the Levites. They offer, they do the day of atonement for me. He said, you're not justified by that. Okay, go ahead. Ye are fallen from grace. You fall, you've left Christ. Go ahead. For we through the Spirit Wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Mm -hmm. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. So in verse 6, he's repeating what he said in verse 2. 
He's saying, for in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision. It goes right back to 1 Corinthians 7. Go back there. 1 Corinthians 7, 19, once again. He's reiterating because there was a big doctrinal uh, argument at this time. You had to be circumcised and keep animal sacrifice for salvation. That was the argument. Read that again. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 19. Circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing. But the keeping of the commandments of God. Watch this. Let me show you something about the heavy writings of Paul. Go to Acts. I believe it's chapter 20 or 21. Let me look real quick. Uh, bear with me. Acts chapter 20. Ah, uh, boy, here we go. Find me the scripture. It's right, it's right, it's right around here somewhere. Where... Peter says, what is it therefore, brethren, we must needs come together? For they have heard that thou teachest men to forsake the law. Okay, it's Acts 21, verse 22. Okay. Okay, Acts 21, and let's start at verse 20. Watch this. Acts 21 and verse 20. Now we're reading this. I just want to show you what, based on what we read in Galatians 5 and 1 Corinthians is going to coincide with what we're reading here. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. Mm -hmm. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. You see that? Where would they get that misconception from? His letters. His letters. His letters. He says circumcision is nothing. Circumcision is nothing. Uncircumcision is nothing. So somebody who's not studied will go, hey, Paul is saying we don't have to be circumcised. That's where the misconception was coming from. What? Hold that. Give me First Peter's chapters of three or two. Chapter three. Give me that. Because the apostle Peter had to check out the letters of Paul. Second Peter's. Thank you. Second Peter chapter three and verse 15. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. 2 Peter 3.15, an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things. Stop. So this lets you know that Peter had to read Paul's letters. Before hmm. them letters went out, Peter got a copy of it. He said, let me see what you're writing. So go ahead, verse 16 again. And also in all his epistles. The word epistle means letters or writings. Go ahead. Speaking in them of these things, and which are some things hard to be understood. Like what? Circumcision is nothing. Uncircumcision is nothing. That's hard. The average person would be like, I don't got to get circumcised. Go ahead. Which they that are unlearned. Which they that are unlearned. And unstable. And mentally unstable or spiritually unstable. Rest. Struggle. The word rest means you struggle with the understanding. Why? Because your mind ain't right. You don't want to keep the commandments in the first place. So the second you read his letters, that's justification. We got to keep the commandments. That's what you do. That's what Christianity does. Go ahead. As they do also the other scriptures. As they do also what other scriptures? The Old Testament. Because the New Testament wasn't written yet. Go ahead. Unto their own destruction. Wow. Unto their own deaths. Unto their own destruction. Okay. Show you what you say is key because not only in Paul, letter, even in our Old Testament, these people were trying to look for loopholes to break God's commandments. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's why when they said that their whole thing is for their own destruction in the first place, these spirit back. Exactly. Let's go back to Galatians. Verse 6 again. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6. For in Jesus Christ, Neither circumcision availeth anything, 
You know what uncircumcision? Right, because Christ died for both the circumcised Israelites as well as the uncircumcised Israelites. And he said, if you love me, what? Keep my commandments. That's it. Go ahead. But faith which worketh by love. Faith which worketh. What is love, brothers? Keeping the commandments. Very good. Verse 7. Ye did run well. You did run well in this truth. Who did hinder you? Who hindered you in this running, in your walk? Go ahead. That ye should not obey the truth. Let's go back to Acts 15, verse 5 again. So we got to know that Paul's letters are based on the writings in Acts. If you have not read Acts, you're going to look at his letters and go, I'm confused. I don't know what he's talking about. Then stay out of his letters until you read Acts. Acts chapter 15 and verse 5. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed. When you see that part where it says which believed? That means they believed in who? Christ. That's what they're alleging. Go ahead. Saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Read verse 1. Verse 1. Let's read 1 through 5. Yes, sir. Acts 15, verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When wait, wait, after the manner of Moses. The manner of Moses said you had to be circumcised on what day? The eighth day. The eighth day. <laughs> Dag. So remember that whole generation that came out with Joshua? Was they the eighth day when they got circumcised? No, they was, most of them was all full-grown adults. Uh, with following the Pharisees, they would have been jacked up. No, y'all can't be saved because y'all all got circumcised when you was 25 and 30, so this ain't for you. That's how the Pharisees was rolling. Read it again. And certain men which came down from, the, from Judea taught the brethren and yeah, said... Abraham would have been messed up. He, wasn't, he didn't get circumcised on the eighth day. <laughs> Go ahead. Except you be circumcised after the man of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them. You see that word disputation? That means arguing, arguing. And it says it was not small. Right. It was a big confusion in the church. That's why when things happen here in IUIC, don't be shocked. It happened back then. Things are happening now. It's, it's uh, give me a word. It's parallel. It's similar. Everybody understand what I'm saying? So why is this argument going on in the church? What's going on? I'm confused. It happened during the time of the apostles too. You had idiots rise up with doctrines. Go ahead. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenice and Samaria, declaring the con conversion of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders. And they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. Now let's go back to Galatians chapter Let's go to chapter 2. Watch what happened. See, Galatians fills in the missing pieces that you might, that Acts gives a, I always tell people this, the book of, the New Testament is an abbreviation. You're not getting everything. You got to put the, the precepts together in the New Testament. Everybody with me so far, you understand? Watch this. Galatians chapter 2. Let's start at verse 1. Galatians 2 verse 1. Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and, com and communicated unto them that gospel, which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. This is filling in what we read in Acts 15. Go ahead. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. So Titus didn't want to be circumcised. Why? And that because of false brethren and unawares. And that because of false brethren unawares. Brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. The bondage was the old covenant. They wanted to bring us back to that. So it says the confusion was so much, Titus didn't want to get circumcised because he started listening to these clowns. Yep. 
Okay, so Titus was like, you know what? I'm not even getting circumcised. To hell with all this. I'm confused over here. I'm confused here. So Titus got caught in the midst of all the arguing. Everybody with me so far? Go ahead. Verse 5. To whom we gave place by subjection. No, not for an hour. Paul that said, I didn't listen to these clowns not for one hour. See, some of y'all be listening to these idiots for two hours, three hours. Paul said, I didn't listen to him for an hour. He might have given him five minutes, and that's it. Your time is up. That's how you got to be in this truth. You hear somebody coming with a different doctrine, you got to shut them down. When you start giving the ear to them, that's when you get confused. Like we get this call from the stupid sister who's been with us four years. I want you to explain uh, the sunrise, Sabbath. I ain't explaining nothing, idiot. You've been with us four years. You listen to an idiot do a three-hour video, and now you're confused. You are an idiot, sister. Goodbye. Click. Hang up the phone on him. For four years, you have sat amongst us learning and didn't learn nothing. You're an idiot. Y'all brothers, stop wasting your time with these women like this. Stop wasting your time. They'd be the first one. Ugh. Anyway, go ahead. I'm about to go on a tangent on them now. I know they didn't do nothing to us. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not y'all. I ain't talking about you sisters. Go back. Where we at? Verse 5. To whom we gave place by subjection. No, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. God accepteth no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. So he said, there's these dudes that's with the apostles who's making it seem like they have some importance. He said, these dudes ain't nobody. They ain't nothing. He said they might think they're somebody, but they're not nobody. This is, this is heavy what Paul is saying right there. <laughs> you're trying to set yourself up like you're somebody, but you ain't nobody. Go ahead. But contrawise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me, toward the Gentiles. Go ahead. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to, who seemed to be pillars, leaders, mm -hmm. perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Now people see that word heathen and get confused. Oh, the heathen. Give me that in Ezekiel about the heathen. Ezekiel 20, verse 32. See, the word heathen means non-Israelite. Okay. Ezekiel 25 and verse 8. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Moab and Seir do say, Behold, the house of Judah is like unto all the heathen. Go back. Now go to Ezekiel 20 verse 32. I thought I asked for Ezekiel 20 verse 32. Yeah. Ezekiel 20 verse 32. Thank you, Officer Leon. We appreciate you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and they and that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all. That ye say, we will be as the heathen, mm -hmm. as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. See how we wanted to be? The Israelites wanted to assimilate and become like all the other nations. Just like today, there's nothing different. We want to be like America. We want to be like the American white man and white woman. We want to look like them, act like them, celebrate like them. We want to be everything like them. That's what Ezekiel 20 is saying. And Cole said that we want to be like the heathen. Let's go back. Back to Galatians 5 now. Back to Galatians 5. Verse 7 again, please. Galatians chapter 5, verse 7. You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? So you understand what's happening. In the book of Acts, chapter 15, there was much confusion in the Israelite churches. Because you had a sect of Pharisees that rose up saying you have to be circumcised and keep the law of Moses for salvation. They were literally trying to move Christ out the way like he didn't exist. Trying to bring everybody back to Moses. Go ahead. This persuasion cometh not of him that called you. Who called us? The Lord. Christ called us. He says this persuasion cometh not of him that called. Christ didn't go around and teach that salvation comes through animal sacrifice. Go ahead. Christ said... Uh, he that cometh unto me. How does it go? Come out help me. Y'all know my memory. He that cometh unto me. How does it go? He that cometh unto me shall be saved. Something like that. Nobody know what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, anyway, read on. Galatians 5 verse 9. A little leaven. Leaven if the whole lump. Now what does he mean in this context? A little leaven, leaven if the whole, whole lump. A little what? 
a little sin, a little sin. Leaven if the whole lump. And leaven makes bread do what? Rise. So you got a little leaven. I'll give you an example. At one of the old schools, a brother came in and said, I don't think we have to wear fringes anymore because Hebrews uh, chapter 8 says the law is in our heart. So there was a bunch of us there, and I said the law is not in our heart yet. Bear with me. Give me that. Go back to Hebrews with that. Go back. Just in case an uh, idiot runs up with y'all on this thing. Where is that at? Hebrews 8 and 10. Right. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. So this idiot, guess what tribe, Guess what kingdom he was from? Northern kingdom. <laughs> he said, we don't got to keep the commandments based upon this. So go to Isaiah 54, 13, please. Isaiah 54 and verse 13. Isaiah 54, verse 13. We're going to read... Mm, 13 and 14, yes. Isaiah 54, 13. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. And righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear from terror, for it shall not come near thee. So is that talking about now or in the kingdom when terror is going to be far from us? In the kingdom. So verse 3, and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord. That goes back, get, watch, Ezekiel 20. Being taught of the Lord. Z Ezekiel 20 mm, and verse 35. Ezekiel 20, verse 35. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face. See that? That's when we shall all be taught of the Lord. That's when we shall all be taught of the Lord. Everybody with me so far? Mm -hmm. So don't, I pray none of you jump up talking about you got the law in your heart. You got to go. We need a trap door up in here. <laughs> With all kind of fornicating going on, video sex going on, the hell? You got the law in your heart. So a little leaven, leaven if the whole lump. So when I heard the brothers say that, I said to the brothers around, I said, this is more. I said, Dumb, come, you might think that it's because he said, let's listen to his argument next Sabbath. And I said to the brothers, and I was the youngest one. I said, mistake. I wouldn't listen to it if I was y'all. They said, why? I said, well, the scripture says, um, Paul said, I didn't entertain them, no, not for how long? Not for an hour. I said, y'all want to give this dude license to spread this doctrine? I said, I don't agree. I said, because the, 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 the fringes don't represent one law. The friend, wearing of the fringes represents all the law. I said, so if he says you don't got to keep this one, there's going to be more behind it. Ah, uh, you, 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 you reading too much into it. You reading too much into it. I said, all right, leave it alone. Next week, they allowed this fool, he was a fool, to go through the doctrine Half the congregation got confused. We ain't got to keep the commandments. The week after that, he comes in with a plate, on the Sabbath, a plate of hot food. Pork. Pork, by the way. He says, yes, we don't have to obey the laws of the Sabbath. And I said, I, I told you. I said, I told you. The whole, the whole school fell apart. The entire school fell apart. That's when I hear stuff, throw that nigga out. I, don't, I ain't entertaining y'all. So if you got a doctrine in your mind, you better don't bring it up around me. I'm telling you what I'm going to say. Get the F out. And I'm not going to say F either. <laughs> Back to Galatians. Back to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verse 9. A little leaven, leaven if the whole lump. So you let a little sin in, it's going to rise and take over everything. That's what's going to happen. Mm. Go ahead. Not might. It will. Go ahead. I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. Wow. Now, that's a heavy statement. 
He, it says, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. Now, we will read this right now, and I've given you the historic background on it. But don't forget Romans 15, 4. Let's read it again. Read Romans 15, 4. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Read it again. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? It says the things that was written aforetime was written for our learning. So when we go back to Galatians 5 again, read verse 10 again. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 10. I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment. Now let's relate that to today. He that troubleth you shall bear his judgment. You got to think about the men and the people that followed them who brought in strange doctrines and managed to pull disciples out after them. So it was true back then. It's true today. It says, I'm going to read that bottom part again. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. So that goes for brothers pushing a sunrise doctrine, chicken on the Passover doctrine. You can smoke weed doctrine. Well, it's no doctrine. Esau's a Saudi Arabian doctrine. You go, he going to bear the judgment. And all them little stupid spirits that follow him, they, gonna get to, they will get judged by the Lord. Everybody with me so far? Okay, well, all righty then. Now, and then you got the next idiot group that they say, we don't agree with the doctrine, but they never went against them. You understand what I'm saying? There's a, what's that expression that about silence? Consent. Silence is consent. You ever heard that before? Ah. <sighs> It said a certain way. I remember I heard King say it. Martin Luther King said it. I just can't remember how it goes at this moment. But somebody's saying evil. You hear him, but you remain silent. That means you're in agreement, 100% agreement. And that's your user liars out there, your weasel eels out there, all them clowns. Okay? They are enablers. That's why, that's why in Galatians 2, when Paul said, uh, where is it at? Hmm. Two and six. Five. Where he says, Well, these who seem to be somewhat. That's verse no. six. Verse six. Galatians two, verse six. But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me, God accepted no man's person. Right. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. No, go to verse two. Verse two. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them. That gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation. Trying to find my poem, the part where he says, uh, not for an hour. Oh, uh, verse 5. Verse 5, thank you. Yep. To, whom we have, to whom we gave place by subjection. No, not for an hour. Watch this part. That the truth of the gospel might continue with you. So if Paul did give place, would it continue with them? Nope. No. That's why Paul didn't entertain. He said, if I, give, if, I, if I give place to them, if I do listen to them, then it will cause confusion. People... They won't have no faith. They'll lose the truth. That's why it says in the bottom, it says that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Because if I did give place to them, it won't continue with them. It'll cause confusion. So Paul entertained nonsense. But what do I do? You, I can do what I want. I'm a grown man. I'm going to go on Facebook. Yeah. Watch what I want to watch. So he tell y'all, be mindful of Facebook. Be mindful of social media. Don't watch this. Block them. Get rid of them. Oh, you, you're trying to control us. Yeah. Tell us what to do. Okay, no problem. You end up in a damn freaking bird box also. Be a bird box then. That's what happens. Exactly. I just posted something that was sent to me, post by King. Thank you, brothers, that are uh, uh, sending me the messages, sisters, too. Y'all on point. Y'all on point. You got it? Mm -mm. Watch this. Here it come. Here it come. Read that, or blow it up so Officer Liam can read that. It's at the bottom. Right there. There comes a time when silence is betrayal. There comes a time when silence is betrayal. I tell a lot of you IUIC captains that. 
You got some captains in. You know who you are, you captains, because I spoke to you. All this evil going on, and you're like, mum's the word. I'm a mouse in the corner. You are a traitor in waiting. I'm going to say it again. And don't think I don't see you. All you quiet captains that when evil come out, you, you run to the corner, you're not a leader. I'm telling you straight, you are not a leader, and my eye is on you. I know who you is, and you know who you is, too. That's right, I said, is. I speak how I want to speak. Read that again. <laughs> there comes a time when silence is betrayal. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. At the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. See that? The silence of our friends. Wow. Read the next part. Only in the darkness can you see the stars. Now, that's heavy. Only in the darkness can you see the stars. That's what the Lord said. In the midst of uh, affliction, how does it go in uh, Sirach 2? In the midst of, uh, give me that, affliction. Yes, sir. You only, uh, Sirach 2 and 5. This, so here, only in the darkness can you see the stars. When there's evil and turmoil, the stars will shine. You're going to see the men of God, the women of God. They're going to shine. They're going to be there. Read the Sirach 2 and, is it 5? Yes, sir. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So when adversity comes, evil comes, the acceptable men and women, you're going to see them shine like the stars. Darkness comes, you're going to see the men and women shine like stars. But you silent ones, you are complicit to evil. You are our enemies. You're an enemy to God, Christ, the angels, and the nation of Israel. Fact. Everybody understand that? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, uh, perfect. Like this afternoon, I, uh, yeah, I have seen it. Because a lot of time when you see heresy, you see all time, it's to prove those elect. They're going to come out in their perfection. You understand? But a lot of time when you see people just bent out of shape, yo, can you explain that to me? Uh, but you notice that way before that, they never tell you to explain anything. But now they know that they're caught up in the virus and the flood that are there. Then they say, can you explain that to me then? Can you explain that? No, brother, you caught up in the he said, she said. That, that's why like a lot of times your brothers uh, need to pay attention. Pay attention to what's going on. Prophecy is being unfolded. We read the scripture, then you see it right into your face. Whatever Paul says is manifested. Then you tell me you have a quote because you lack of faith. You don't have that faith. Right. Give Sirach 41.16 real quick. Regarding being, um, scared. that's fear. It's really, that's what it is. It's fear. Silence, I'm scared. I won't say nothing. It's fear. Sirach chapter 41, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Therefore, be ashamed. Be, nope, excuse nope. me. Therefore, be shamefaced according to my word. So the Lord is saying, be shamefaced according to my word. Not according to your feelings. According to my word. Watch this. For it is not good to retain all shamefacedness. It is not good to, re to retain all shamefacedness. Mm. Shyness, quiet, just quiet, humble, real quiet. I'm going to stay quiet. I'm gonna mind my business. It's not good to remain shamefaced. Go ahead, read again. It is not good to what? To retain. It is, for it is not good to retain all shamefacedness. All shamefacedness. The time when you cannot be shamefaced. Go ahead. Neither it is... Neither, neither is it altogether approved in everything. It's not, always, it's not always the right time to be that way. Sometimes you got to speak up. It's not proven everything. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah, Judah yeah, did. Yeah, right, Charles, don't say that. Judas, remember when right. uh, the Israelite leaders was going to give up the whole nation to the mm -hmm. freaking... Um, mm -hmm. uh, Assyrians. Who? Babylonians. Yes. Was it Babylon? Babylonians? Okay. And Babylonians. then <laughs> Judah went and said, hey... That thing y'all said is not right with God. Right. She had to correct him. She said, I can't. I'm a shamefaced mm -hmm. woman, but I got to say something. Because right. all the men is going to hell off. Right. That's when it's time not to be shamefaced. And a child named Daniel, when they were going to judge Susanna. A child said, nah, I'm clean of this blood. This is evil as hell. What you're doing? You know, a little, a little I say, a, I say, a young youth said no. And cursed the other. You guys are foolish as hell. Choke the elders out. Right. Y'all <laughs> foolish for killing this woman. Yeah, you notice that even though when brother not speaking and saying anything, Bishop, because they have something inside, mm -hmm. then then they they will make us understand that hey, every time I say something, brother will kick me out. But no, 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 no. A righteous man will never think like that. Mm -hmm. You understand? A foolish man will think like that. If I say anything, they're gonna kick me out. Since when the scripture says you say anything, they kick you out, because that's how they justify themselves to hold that wicked that is inside. 
If I if I say anything, they're gonna put me in the they're gonna put me in the front side. They're gonna that's evil, brother. That's an evil of thinking. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed, but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.